In this video teaches you which forms to choose, how to cycle your deck, how to navigate the minimap, what to do at spiral or if you're allocated to an outside fight, and when it is the right time to flee if you die. All of that summarizes what you need to do in Beast Moon and if none of that made sense, this is the perfect video for you. There is no point in playing Beast Moon if you don't collect the quest from this guy. He will reward you with Moon Gold Dust which you can then use to craft spellments or unlock new Beast Moon forms. If you want to craft a specific spellment like a Stormwing, Thermic Golem, or Thunderman for PvP, you get the crafting recipe from harvesting your Beast Moon plants or when you complete the waves in Beast Moon. There are three waves to Mayhem and the guy will only give you six Moon Gold Dust per character. This is why you see people switch characters to collect as much Moon Gold Dust as possible. Again, there are three waves. The first wave you want to split in groups of two on the map and that is called a 2v2. You decide which teleporter you go into depending on where teammates went. The entire game, you'll be looking at this minimap to see where everyone is. You are the yellow arrow and everyone else is the red arrow. Think of Mayhem as like a dungeon. A good comparison would be Mount Olympus where you have to complete the three minion battles to access the boss fight. Similarly in Mayhem, you need to kill the three minion battles to access the boss fight at Spiral. And like all boss fights, you need bladers and trappers for your strong AoE hitter. And if you don't have any of them, then you would need a healer and people to weakness so that your hitter doesn't die. For minion battles, you rarely have the time to get an AoE hit in as your health is super low and the enemies hit very hard, so you should be discarding your AoE hit most of the time. You are also against a clock where if you don't complete Spiral on time, you lose the game. That means you need to fight the minion battles very efficiently by running into the balance mob first or the lowest rank mob first. This is because you want turn order advantage if they are less of a threat. Avoid using an overtime that costs pips because you need to save your pip to use an instant damage hit or else you're stalling the game. Your map may look a bit different because there are four maps. There is Mirage, Avalon, Celestia and The Heap. If you have the Mirage map, two players will enter the blue teleporter to go to the top right and the rest will go through the red teleporter to head to the top left and bottom left. If you have the Avalon map, two people enter the blue teleporter on that map to go to the bottom left and the rest goes to the red teleporter to the top left and top right. If you have the Celestia map, four people enter the blue teleporter to split off to star and moon and two people go through the red to go to sun. These are the best beginner friendly forms you should play. If you choose to play the fire minotaur or any of the pig forms, make sure to level it up to only level 2. Never level up a form past level 2 because you will be wasting lunari coins at that point. Uh, this is because your level resets back to level 1 each beast moon event. As such, it is more ideal to tear up your form, but that takes several months of playing beast moon and planting seeds to get enough resources. And the rest of the forms that are listed here, you don't really need to level it up or tear it up, so you're good to play it as it is. To know which form is available because it changes every event, it will say upgrade level when you flick through the forms. Then you can see which cards that form has to familiar yourself with what cards you will be looking for, which is the whole point of discarding and cycling your deck. With all that being said, let's go through how you should cycle your deck. As a Stormcroc, I must look for my Sharks, which is my strongest hit. A Stormcroc never uses their 4 pip hit, so I discard it and cast my Shark on the Baboon because he has the lowest health. Next round, I pulled a Twin Blades, which if I blade another player, it also gives me a blade. Analyzing this scenario, Corwin is about to die, so giving him a blade will be useless if he is dead, so I discard it. Next round, I don't discard anything because when I use my 2 pip shark, the next round I'll be at 1 pip. And so to gain another pip, I will use a 0 pip hit, might as well use a 0 pip hit, so that I can shark again in the next round. However, because my teammate did not discard properly where he continued to use overtime hits, we did not kill on time, so now there is maybe a 5-10% to chance of winning now because of that one person throwing the game. 
This is why it is crucial to know how to cycle your deck properly. Now that we have died, we have to choose a new form. Round 1, I discard my 4 pip AoE and the Fire Cat because when I use this 1 pip hit, I will be back to 2 pips to hopefully draw my Brimstone Revenant. Unfortunately, I did not draw the Brimstone so I discard the 4 and the 5 pip hit and then use my 1 pip. Okay, we finally got everything we needed and as you can see, that took a bit longer to find our biggest hit, which is why we upgrade the fire pick to level 2 because you get a firezilla card which is basically another brimstone revenant. As a life minotaur, I am a healer and my strongest attack costs 3 pips. Luckily, the first round I pulled the 3 pip hit, so then I discarded the 5 pip and passed. However, if I did not draw the 3 pip hit, I would heal my teammate instead. Next round I discard the 4 pip unicorn and I use my 3 pip hit. Now that someone else has joined to help our battle, I can use my 1 pip hit because the minion is almost dead and I would assume that my teammates will finish the minion off. If you are finding value out of this video, please leave a like as it helps the YouTube algorithm to recommend this video to more people and a lot of people do not know how to play Beastman so I want to teach as many people how to play. Okay, now that you have killed everything, collect some pips and walk in the teleporter which will bring you back to spawn to regain your health and pips. Make sure to repurchase your treasure cards if you use them. Repurchase treasure cards to have more copies of the cards we are looking for when we are discarding. This is because we are only given 3 card space and you can only increase that space if you level up your form or tear it up. But again, leveling up your form is not ideal and tearing up a form requires a lot of resources so we are left to purchase treasure cards to not deck fail as much. In order to purchase treasure cards, you need battle coins and you get them whenever you collect a chest inside the game or if you harvest your basement plants. Now that you have completed a battle on the first wave, you have two options, help to find time or fight another battle. If you choose to help someone, again look at the map to determine which teleporter is the fastest direction to get to the battle. If you choose to find time, you'll be running around the map looking for the clock father if you have the Mirage or Avalon map. If you have the Celestia map, you'll be looking for a time clock which looks exactly like a coin clam, so the Celestia map is a bit difficult. Let your team know that time has been found by typing it out. The chat in Beastman is essentially like a group chat where everyone can see your messages. Once everyone finishes their battle, Spiral can start. These forms are good at playing support and you want them in Spiral. If you choose a form that is not one of these, do not sacrifice the entire game by entering Spiral. You will be helping Spiral by completing the outside battles which gives support cards to Spiral. You want to follow this exact order of completing the outside fights. If you have the Mirage map, go through the blue teleporter and run forward to access the Fangs fight. This gives a blade and a shield to everyone at Spiral. After the fight, run back to the blue teleporter to collect pips and health then go through the red teleporter to complete the fight in front of that. For the Avalon map, go through Red Teleporter first, following this path for Phalanx. Then, the next fight, you go into the Blue Teleporter to do this fight, which gives the Spiral a blade and a trap. For the Celestia map, you only go through the Blue Teleporter to access Phalanx and Blades. You obviously do the Phalanx first by following this path, and then this way to access Blades. Now, if you're a player doing Spiral, make sure to walk into a minion first and not a boss. Now, how do we cycle in Spiral? If you are playing any of these forms, you are discarding your useless hits to find a blade, trap, hill or shield for your AoE hitter. After you do all that, then you can start using your hits. Alright, now onto wave 2. Communicate to your team that you want to do a 3v2, meaning 3 players will fight one battle and 3 at another. And then whichever team completes their battle first, they do the remaining battle. Do not make the mistake of starting a difficult battle first. This is super common, like in this example, where everyone went to the hardest fight, which is extremely risky if one of the player dies, especially if they have a good form. You determine the difficulty by seeing if there is a balance mob. 
you want to start those ones first. Avoid the fights with a life or a storm, if possible, on the second and third wave. And especially leave the double storm, double life, and double fire for last. This is because four people can help the most difficult fight if you leave it for last, while two other people look for the time. One clock father or time clan will always spawn each wave. Once you finish all the outside battles, again, four people join Spiral and two people go to the same outside fight and you just repeat everything you did from wave 1 all the way to wave 3 when Spiral starts. It's basically the same thing over and over again. Now, wave 3 is where things get a bit messy. There's a high chance a player would die in Spiral, so a person from the outside fight will have to join Spiral. If you're almost done with the Phalanx fight, do not flee, but if you're no we're close to finishing that battle, one person must flee, like in this example. Choose a different form and help out Spiral. Again, because this is the last wave, the person who died at Spiral shouldn't really care too much about losing their form because there is no more games after this. You want to do everything you can to beat Spiral regardless of losing your forms on the last wave. You only care about keeping your forms for wave 1 and 2. There are a lot of backseaters in Beastman because communication is key. You want to follow instructions, take advice and apply the criticism. You don't have time to argue with your teammates and you don't get rewards if you lose the game. So if you just be compliant with each other and do as you're told, then you should easily win.